like the right Tomb Raider? I don't think I did. Ah, <laughs> uh, gosh. What do you do? What do you do? Anyways. Ah, oh, jeez. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream, the b and stream. My name is b and and welcome to the stream. Uh, today is the 20th of September 2021. Just remember, tomorrow is the 21st night of September. Um, does anyone know any of the other lyrics of that song? Hello, Mr. Crip. How's it going? Uh, so I'm doing a quick just once over check because I'm going to be playing Tomb Raider today. And this is a fun one because there are two Tomb Raider... Tomb Raiders? There's two games called Tomb Raider. One of them... Oh, dang, there's three games called Tomb Raider on Twitch. Oh, no. So, I'm playing the original of the Tomb Raiders. I do not know how to get Twitch to refer to... Um, refer to the old Tomb Raider. Because there's a 2013 reboot, also called Tomb Raider. I forgot about the stream last week, don't worry, because uh, the VOD's still on Twitch if you do want to see it, and also, it's on YouTube, in case you miss that, but that's okay. Uh, I'm just going to stick with this stream category, someone will find it, I don't know. Or do you put it in retro, who knows? Uh, Tomb Raider is a game that I hold kind of near and dear to my heart. I never grew up with it, but I knew... I. I knew it growing up. I think I, I was more aware of it when um, Tomb Raider Legend came out in like 2006. Because um, I'm a bit young. This game came out basically when I was born. So it's pretty old. But I then played uh, the yeah it on Steam at some point, And then I was like, hey, this actually is a really weird game. And then I played it again. And I really liked it a lot. Um, and I've kind of just played it a few times. Like, I don't know, it's been a game that... I don't know. I played, I played it a few times. I can't say much more about it. So let us dive right into the old fashioned. I ran it before starting the stream, but I've got my bat file and away we go. And hopefully it's really loud. So I'm going to tweak the audio a little bit to make sure it's not really loud because it is going to be really loud on my end. So give me a volume check as the game goes. It's probably not going to get that much louder than that. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. We're, we're going to sit at minus 18.4 decibels. <laughs> How about that? Uh, this game starts off with a nuke, as as always. Uh, the Tomb Raiders, I guess in general, they're all rather interesting to me because they're all these, like, I mean, they are just these Indiana Jones-style games. Uh, well, in, in terms of setting, there's a bit of an ancient mystery. Uh, something maybe a bit supernatural. Something maybe a bit... You know, very odd. Like, you look at this and you go, Ooh, what's going on? What's, what's this? Um, rather pure, though. But it's also got these hilarious cutscenes. <laughs> with those wonderful 1996 man? graphics. Get that kind of attention from you? It's hard to say exactly, but you seem to be doing fine. Well, great. Though truth is, it ain't me that wants you. Oh? No, Miss Jacqueline Natla does. From Natla Technologies. Oh, my Nintendo you know, DS. creator of all things bright and beautiful. <laughs> Seal it, Larson. Ma'am. Feast your eyes on this, Lara. How does that make your wallet rumble? I'm sorry. I only play for sport. Then you'll like a big park. Peru. Vast mountain ranges to cover. Sheer walls of ice. I love how she's lured crags, by the fact that there's winds. just Peru. And there's this little trinket. An age-old artifact of mystical power is buried in the unfound tomb of Qualipec. That's my interest. You could leave tomorrow. Are you busy tomorrow? Yep, that's that's just the intro to the game. Uh, note my 3D effects logo kicking in. Oh, there we go. So, that's, yeah, that's basically the setup for the game. I don't know. Lara gets told that there's something in Peru. So, let's start the game. There exists a little side uh, feature called Lara's Home. I'm going to just ignore it. it. It's just me jumping around the house a bit. Maybe I'll show it off at the end. But, let's dive into it. <laughs> Peru Civil War flashbacks. Oh, jeez. What's in Peru?
I, real talk, I feel, after playing like some of the later ones recently, just playing this, well, looking at these cutscenes in the first one, it's like, oh, that's some wonderful, wonderful CG. But, hey, I mean, that was games at the time. You can't be too much more visually uh, demanding than Toy Story was, so. There's a lot of, like, solid animation in parts anyways. Just, yeah, the door is, of course, two rectangular prisms, but what was in Peru remains in Peru. <sighs> Lots of fluffy boys. She does a massive just like drop here. Like I know she's jumping in the snow, but like jeez, bro. <laughs> he broke the rule. Oh, poor guy. And then we come, the iconic shot of the beginning of the game. Standing in front of these massive doors, only to be locked inside because we can't be stuffed rendering outdoors in this game. And uh, yeah, the game it takes place entirely indoors. But away we go. This is Tomb Raider 1, uh, starting from the beginning. First things first, uh, I'm playing the PC version, the DOS version, as you may have noticed earlier. Uh, you've got save slots. Uh, you can save whenever and load whenever, so you'll see me kind of abusing it a bit. Um, not abusing in the sense of, like, I'm exploiting a game mechanic, but abusing in the sense that this game really likes killing you right away. I showed to other part of the world what was happening in Peru and died for this. Oh, man. You know, it's, it's such a tragedy. Why didn't you use Timbati Patch? Oh, there's a Timbati Patch? I, I like running my games really pure. So, this is exactly how the game, uh, I guess, plays if you... You know, download off Steam or GOG. Uh, minus, I, I've installed DG Voodoo. Um, I think it comes with, um... It's like Open Glide. It's not quite End Glide. And it's not DG Voodoo. It's something, something in between. And I love taking just damage that people probably will yell about. Uh, I guess, yeah, there probably is something with the lighting. I don't know. Uh, game looks fine to me. I'm playing it. This is how, how you play it. Uh, Lara has a bunch of moves. She she climbs. Uh, I've got the in-game music tracks going already. I've definitely tested. The in-game music tracks are, will play when they do. So don't worry about that. Um, the widescreen, I'm fine not playing with the widescreen. I kind of like the, the 4x3. Nice and old school. Uh, is this a little secret up here or no? Who knows? Uh, so, I'm not going to claim this is a uh, 100% run or anything, this is just more a casual playthrough and kind of what I remember. Um, I know you can slide down over there, there's a lot of places to go in this game. Uh, yeah, no loading times, which is a major plus over playing the PlayStation 1 version, and uh, also with the PlayStation 1 version, you, uh, the default, DOS sorry, yes, yes, I should mention, um, that, yeah, I, I have done the, uh, the 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 music loading um and uh please yell at me if it's actually not working but i'm very certain that at some point in this level you'll hear like dun 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 you'll hear the enemy music come up so this game's great i i do there you go like that that kind of sound effect it doesn't play by default on the pc version you do have to kind of set it up um but it does work eventually uh uh, nah, it's not a speedrun. I, like, I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing enough to, to speedrun it. Like, I would probably need to route how I'm going this game. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I, I do really enjoy this game. Uh, yeah, so the, the PlayStation version, you pick up, actually, I think there's best, uh, yeah, there's hard save points in the game. Um, so, uh... It's a lot easier to play on PC, if you are playing on PC. There also exists a Sega Saturn version, I believe. A little music... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not... I, I can't remember what exactly is, like, considered the music tracks and what's not, such that, you know, what is playing or not. Um, 
Uh, to explain Lara's moveset a bit, uh, she has tank controls. She turns around. I'm going to eventually get the lock on on this guy. Maybe I'll get off the bridge. Um, she has tank controls, so you'll see me moving forward and back, uh, and then turning. Uh, she has guns. The guns, the little pistols, have infinite ammo, so don't worry about constantly firing them. If there's an enemy, she'll look towards the enemy and constantly be aiming at it. So, again, you don't have to worry even about aiming. It's all about you doing your momentum. Sup, Corns? How's it going? Your momentum? It's all about you, like, knowing where you are. Um, so that's, that's that kind of mechanic. Um, on top of that, she's got a walk ability where you can hold down a button and you can walk. Uh, the walking prevents you from jumping off a ledge, and that will be very important because the platforming, as you can tell with the level design, it's all kind of grid-based, so all the jumps are actually pretty regular. And my favorite fact, that we almost got rid of the loading screens in games in Gen 8 consoles. Yeah, like, um, uh, I, I mentioned that there's a 2013 reboot with the same name, uh, and one real nice thing about that reboot, and I'm going to save here because I know exactly what, what happens after this, one nice thing with the reboot is that it uh, does the classic, like, long corridor loading screen, like the Metroid Prime style. Um, which is actually, like, quite neat, because that is, that is you know, a way to suddenly... There's a little bear down there. That is a nice way to get rid of loading screens. Uh, in this game, loading screens are just too quick, because computer is too good. I don't even know if there is like a loading screen or whether it's just the game is black until it loads. It's just, yeah, like, computer's too good. I'm gonna get rid of that bear because he is gonna be a problem later on. Uh, without dropping down. Oh, he's running off. <laughs> Lara, uh, <laughs> you know, harasses the local wildlife. He's, he's stuck down there. Oh, I, I definitely got him because he's not moving. <laughs> cool. But this game, it's it's really neat because it's like, there you go. You, you hear that music and you go, oh, what, something's up. And yeah, of course, there's these little little doggos. You want to be careful. You want to make sure you get them. There you go. Then the music keeps going because why not? <laughs> that music is is you know terrifying. You hear it and you go, oh no, oh no. <laughs> it, it just keeps going, man. Puts you on edge. Uh, yeah, one thing I love about... Why is this loading screen so long? <laughs> Enemies finishing the game and back in. Oh, exactly. Uh, one thing I love about this game is that it's... Technically... Maybe not technically, because that, <laughs> that implies a lot of things. But it really feels like a point-and-click adventure game. Um... Where it's like, oh, it's like, oh, I pull a lever and then I've got to walk over here. Like, yeah, you got to do platforming to do that. But uh, there's a lot of, you know, you pick up items and you got to figure out where to use them. There's a lot of, like, magical stuff like that. There's also, like, you know, death traps everywhere. There's, of course, you do the wrong move. You fail. You die a painful death of Lara falling on her face. Uh, it happens a lot. But just see me instinctively save. Just don't worry. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> but on top of that, one thing I really like about this game is that it harnesses that, like, level of adventure and, and real, like, exploration, which I feel like so many games nowadays just, they don't quite get that adventure. I, I apologize for what's going on over there, jeez. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, this, this game feels massive. <laughs> oh, here they come. Here they come. <laughs> it feels massive. There's so many things going on with it. I love this bait. It's just like, ah, yes, health. You're going to need as, as much health as you can. Because this game does kind of get picky if you're, if you're not careful. Uh, Lara's got a couple of extra moves as well. She's got this roll, which flips her 180 degrees, and you can also do, I believe, is it in this game? Uh, maybe it's not in this game. Nah, not in this game. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, she's got a lot of moves, and, um, 
Yeah, no, I just, I, I really love the atmosphere of this game. I can't, I can't stop gushing about it. It's got a couple of problems, like tank controls are definitely, you know, something that I could do without in life. Uh, the door opened on that side, so I'm actually going to skip the, the death corridor and drop down over there. Um, yeah, the tank controls kind of get in the way. The design of the levels makes sense with tank controls, but obviously it would be really nice to not have to worry about tank controls and stuff. Um, I believe that's the end of the first level, actually. Yeah, it the levels get much longer, so if you'll see that there's only 15 levels, just be warned that, yeah, they, they do start getting a lot longer later on. Um... You gotta watch out, man. We've got these pups everywhere. Uh, oh, I'm aiming at the far one. You're gonna see me probably never used any of the side weapons as well. You'll, you'll see that I've got these pistols here. Uh, you've also got a compass to kind of make sure you're not getting too lost. Uh, and then some health kits, which you'll use, or your med kits, when you get your health back. So. Uh, other than that, it's just a bit of progressing, but generally it's like, oh, you see a puzzle, and you gotta figure out how to solve it. And they start off by just giving you, you know, nice little easy corridors. Get used to the mechanics, get used to how to play the game, and uh, yeah, away you go. But, yeah, I, I think Tomb Raider is just, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one for me, because... Uh, I guess there's a lot of franchises out there that I never really, like, got into as a kid, because I, <laughs> I wasn't really much of a, much, uh, are we looking for a remake of the Pikmin 1 in this dungeon? A remake of the Pik- did they do a Pikmin 1 version of this dungeon? I don't rem I'm thinking, like, I, I played Pikmin 1 actually pretty recently, and, uh, I don't remember something looking like this in there. You gotta keep your eyes out for what's actually a switch out there. Uh, we got a little floor thing. Drying racks. There's a lot of like strange loose items as well all around. Uh, one strat you'll see me doing quite a bit is this one where you walk up to a ledge, hit down to do a jump back, and then you hold forward, jump, and Lara will do a jump at the last point. I guess <laughs> you really didn't need to do it there, but... It's worth trying for that medkit over there. Ooh. Okay, cool. Uh, you'll also see me do this thing where you hold down the use key to jump off, well, to grab a ledge. Grabbing is important. Grabbing is all my manual work. So, there's also these boxes that you can pull and push. And you just have to kind of know that they're boxes that you can pull and, pull and push, but... You can probably jump up to that ledge if you boss it up to get that med kit. No, oh, yeah, really, really good fun game. Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of interesting because I hear the reputation of this game, and I feel I feel like people do talk about the Tomb Raiders in some capacity as being like a an amazing like three D experience. Uh, what is our goal in this dungeon? That question was a joke. Oh, okay, so. Pretty much what Lara's goal is, uh, our short-term goal is to find this key, because we're going to need to open the door. Um, our long-term goal is to go through a couple of levels to get... Oh, and also this key. <laughs> Don't skip both keys. Uh, yeah, our long-term goal for a couple of levels is we're finding the piece of the ski on. Um, and that's deeply nested in level four <laughs> in this, in this uh, area. Um... They kind of pull a weird bait on you where you got to pull the box back through. Um, so I think I might have like walked past the door that requires the key. Uh, but ultimately like this beginning part just kind of is like, oh, okay, like locked door, just find a key, do some platforming, do some exploration. Um, teaching you a bit of like how the level design will work. So in this case, like, oh, okay, like I drop down from a ledge. I'm unable to go back the way I came. So I've got to find a new way of going forward. And a lot of the game actually is like that. It's like you'll you'll 
have he'll drop down into an area and then you just gotta work your way back out and whether working your way back out involves pulling a box so slowly over the course of 30 seconds sometimes that's the case uh this is definitely a very patient game so don't expect uh or expect some very like you know large puzzles around lara um also expect her to shoot so many bats she hates bats bane of her existence I'm hearing something. I'm shooting America. I got it. I got it in the end. It's all good. So I believe this actually leads back out with another bat, just in case. Look at these evil bats. Oh my gosh. There you go. So uh, now I've got the keys. I'm going to go around the outside of this area and maybe we'll find a door. Uh, that means we need to find the best treasure. And this is Pikmin 1 really. Oh, because you find treasure on Pikmin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this game pulls a classic, like, uh, first-person shooter of the 90s style trope of spawn enemies whenever you do anything. So you'll actually see so many enemies just appear because I picked up something. Anyway, we've got a door open, so that's all good. And promptly followed by Lara getting shot by a couple of arrows. Cool. Oh, hi there. How you doing? Oh my gosh. They're not too strong, but yeah, they, they're a bit mean. Uh, but that's okay. You see me picking up a couple of health pick, uh, health packs. Uh, the small ones will recover half your health, and the large ones will recover the whole thing. So, picking up a full health kit, basically it's like you can pretty much give yourself full health. But don't die, because otherwise you got to load your, load your save. Uh, here we got a nice little, little structure. There's a surprising amount of, like, landmarks as well that you'll see in this game. Like, not, like, places that are real, but just, like, places that are iconic. Followed by a bunch of corridors that lead you into some other follow-up area. So I believe in this water, this is just, like, if you botch up the platforming here, like, here's a little safeguard. You know, you drop in the water. Nothing too bad. Because yeah, now you gotta now you gotta learn your precision. So you'll see me do this jump here, no problem. Don't need to really worry about that. Uh, this one's a little bit funky because it's diagonal, but again, no issue. Doing a stand and jump. And then this is another another bat. Why not? Is there a second one? Oh, I thought there was a second one in there. Yeah, if that's one thing I actually really like about, like, this game, it's very pure in what it does. Like, uh, I think the later Tomb Raiders kind of meme a bit because some of them don't even have tombs in them. This one, it's all tombs. It's really pure. It's as the name says. Uh, it's so pure that Lara's got a very pointy, um, front end. A wonderful figure. When I saw this water, I had flashbacks about Half-Life 1. Yeah, it's, it's very... <laughs> It is a very pure water. Um, surprisingly, I guess, you can see through it. Um, that was something I feel like a lot of games at the time kind of skipped on. They were just like, eh, water, you know, whatever. You go through the water. But this game, like, this game is really nice visually, albeit requiring a... Um, well, actually, no, it didn't require. There is a software-based render mode. I wouldn't trust the software render mode. It's the hardware-accelerated uh, glide version. Which, uh, which is the one that I'm playing, um. But, uh, it does a lot of really nice graphical things for computers in 1996. Um, probably ran like a chump on people's computers. Uh. So in doing that, that opened the third door. Which I shall go into. Alright. Uh, so here we've got another water pit. Just in case, I guess, again. Oh, they do something a bit cheeky here. Oh, oh. I'm just gonna climb up on this end. Cool. There you go, climb up here. It's a bit of a weird ledge, because it's like, you can go over there, but you can also... Actually, I might as well. I might as well just like climb up over on that side. Oh. I'm not climbing up on that side. Who needs water when you can drink juice? Exactly. 
actually kind of weird with the breakable platforms because now I've got to do the jump a different way. Like, there's enough distance to do the jump, but it's just like, oh, okay, sure. Ugh. Oh, that's not the right angle. Oh, I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I guess one other thing is that this game is very, it's very made like, you will, you will, like, be striving to know where your, your landmarks are, because even though there's no, like, teleports, there's no, like, non-Euclidean stuff going on, it's very easy to get disoriented, um, which is probably why it's actually, it's an amazing, like, play on your first go, because that's, like, these caves are very, like, uh, foreboding uh very like consuming like and i i chalk it up to also like the soundtrack just being really nice and ominous during this um but there's like a lot going on i believe oh i thought they i thought they put a little doggo down here just to give me a fun time as i walk through the end and double check that i keep saving the game every few minutes just so it doesn't you know if i do accidentally cop it Ooh, like that. So, yeah, you're gonna see Lara die a fair bit, but that's okay because I saved. So, as long as you don't save in like a tons of death, uh, deadly scenario. Oop, that's okay. Here we go, here we go. Okay, all good. All good. Lara is not dead today. You got baited. Uh, so I believe through here. I'm trying to recall what, what the level design is actually aiming for right here. It does a pretty good job of like feeding you to where you need to go as well. So for the most part. <laughs> There's some puzzles later on where it's just like, oh my gosh, what? But generally like... You can kind of pick where you've been, where you haven't been, what you've opened. And usually the levels aren't that obscure. So you can see, oh, I opened the door there, so. And also you heard a wonderful noise of... Can I see him from up here or no, not quite. I can, I can hear him, but... Oh, there he is. Get wet, dude. I ain't getting wet today. There's a bear. The AI, by the way, the AI in this game is rather smart. Alright, I definitely got that bear. Uh, the AI is pretty smart in the sense of, like, it knows to run away if you're just hiding on a ledge. Uh, ultimately, if you shoot enough times, you'll you'll be set, but... It's kind of interesting that, like, yeah, they will just run away. Um, all the time, no matter what the, the enemy is. Uh... Good thing you ran up the staircase, because then I knew that there was a staircase over here. That's okay. We got another switch. It's two switches. Switchies. Well, that would have been much more convenient earlier, wouldn't it? Uh, from what I know, the Tomb Raider franchise got milked really hard. This game came out in 1996, and they released one every year until 2005. 2005? That sounds... I'm sorry, 2000. Wait, there's five games. That's what I was thinking. Um, and then, uh, I don't really know what caused Tomb Raider 6 to be late, but they released it in 2003, and it runs kind of like butt. I think it's running on Unreal 2, I believe. Uh, anyway, I love how, like, that's the little... That's what the little pedestal was for, just for the very last door. So if you missed it... Yeah, good luck. There you go, go all the way back. Uh, but that was the second level of the game. I've been streaming for half an hour, so... This actually may not take me too many streams to get through this game. The levels start getting a bit longer, though. This one definitely is an interesting scenario. So we've got this uh, waterfall down here. Uh, you got some doggos there. Um, and uh, your puzzle up the top end is that uh also you don't want to drop into the water because you'll actually get like drifted downstream which it's not the kindest but the puzzle of the level is that you ultimately want to close uh 
the door such that you stop the water current from flowing down. Okay, cool. 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 I'm gone. I'm I'm gone. I'm sailing. I'm sailing down. I'm sailing. I'm going down. <laughs> I, I went down. Okay. So the point is, is that there's there's some gears at the top that you'll need to replace in order to Ah, doggos. Definitely see me cheese the enemies a fair bit. I see people want to wait breach containment. Is that is that an SCP about friendly doggos? They're a bit overtly friendly, aren't they? Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, this is the third one. Why not? One thing I absolutely love about this game as well is the uh, the texture work. It's very like I mean, yeah, it doesn't. You can see these hard edges between all these like floors and stuff, but like I look at it and I go like, oh wow, like you know, these textures are just you know so striking, so strong, and like I guess this was at this like weird point in time as well where like the lighting is very like moody. Also, a uh, little little raptor. Why not? He's got. He's coming to give me a hug. That's okay. They don't get much bigger. There's another one. Why not? Two raptors. Don't you remember when, like, you know, raptors? Oh, hi there. Hello. See ya. I'm going. I'm going, bro. Alright. I'm gonna enter my little hidey hole. See, this guy's smart enough to just like bail when I'm in here. Yeah, gi giant T Rex, why not? He's just chilling. I love. This is probably like one of the most iconic things, and it happens so early in this game. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. He's giving me a hug. He's giving me a hug. He's giving me a real big hug. He's definitely giving me a hug. I... There we go. I'm not... I'm, I'm not free. <laughs> oh, it's a fish and you... If you know about it and plunge into the water, SHS, teleport to the ocean where it eats you. Oh my gosh. Alright, well. Don't fight T-Rexes like that. Don't, don't let a T-Rex jam you into a wall. Uh, that's what I mean by, like, this game is a bit unforgiving. It definitely is just like, yeah, if you, like, and, I mean, I haven't been botching up these jumps too bad. There's a lot of times when it's like, oh, you fail a jump, you fall and die. And you just can't do anything about it apart from getting it right the next time you try. This hidey hole is probably a bit safer for me to go into. It's also the way to go, so... Oh, but they, they hit a little raptor in there. They really like these little raptors, don't they? I think I'm aiming at the T- No, I'm not aiming at the T-Rex. <laughs> so you know about it, so don't go into the water. I... Uh, there's a bit of water I gotta go into on some of these next levels, so... You're gonna have to wish me luck on those ones. Some classic Tomb Raider, yeah! Hopefully you enjoy this stream, I'm... And thank you for the follow. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this stream, I'm just gonna be playing through the the game in little two hour chunks. Uh, shouldn't take too many streams, but... It'll be a nice, like, change of pace. Uh, for those of you who are regular watchers and you've been watching me play Pokemon Gold, uh, in the last stream, I finished, uh, the... Johto half of the game. And I'm like, yep, that's been 11 streams in a row. I'm going to take a breather. I'm going to play a different game for the moment. And then we're going to come back to, bro, you're already dead. I'm not already dead. That that T-Rex. I, I can shoot him eventually. He can't get me. I'm up here. 
I forgot where exactly you get it. I think you just climb up over in that direction, but do I trust it? Well, sure. You're playing Tomb Raider 2 right now? Ah, yes. Tomb Raider 2 is actually like my sleeper favorite of the bunch as well. I think there's a lot of things that. Ah, 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 yeah, no. <laughs> okay. I, I tested the fart, and that was, uh, that was the fart right there. Alright, does the T-Rex forget that I'm over here? Hello, Mr. T-Rex. I love that this happens so early in the game, this T-Rex as well. He's just, he's just chilling there. Okay, alright, here I go. Here I go. Speedy boy, speedy boy, speedy boy, speedy boy, speedy boy, he can't get me. But he got you. Yeah, I know, man. I think he's, he's just not even trying anymore. Oh, this was a secret? Ah. You know about anomaly fish, you're gonna die? How else do you sell this at shop damage? True! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, jeez, bro. Jeez. Give me a heart attack, Mr. T-Rex. <laughs> okay. Alright, cool. Cool. I'm still shooting at something. Uh yeah, I guess. Um, well, this is a small med kit opportunity right here. Uh... Oh, I think I got him. Nah, I would probably be seeing this corpse here if I did get him. Uh, I gotta get onto that bridge, but I've forgotten how. Oh, I think it's actually right at the end, isn't it? Alright, well, I've got my little hidey hole, so we're gonna we're going out dino hunting. If I see a dino, I'm getting them. Oh, no, I did get him. Cool. Yeah, you can eventually kill the dino. Oh, but he's got his his friends. His friends are very upset. Bro, you've got all this food here. You don't need me. You don't need me. There's a massive dead T Rex. Fish is trying to get you when you're not in water. Oh my gosh. Sounds like a person screaming. Yeah, it probably is. Whoa, bit of a drop, bit of a ledge. Uh, trust me to make this jump. I don't trust myself. I don't trust myself to make any of these jumps. You're gonna see me just save after a jump. There's a reason why my save file is 400. Like, that that saves slots. That's, as in, like, I hit the save button 400 times. I don't know how many saves are in, like, the PS1 version of the game, but I'm pretty sure it's, like, three level. Uh, this is one of the gears, and that's what I've been looking for. Grab this one. So, yeah, there's a handful of gears to get. I've forgotten how many gears there are. Whoop. It's a bit of a slide, but sure. Imagine how they make the voice actor to write this raptor scream. Why well, yes, let me let me just do my raptor scream. Ah! <laughs> Freaking T-Rex tail. Massive. <laughs> that's that's my uh, raptor voice. You can hire me. Who what's a voice acting like organization out there? I would love to just like go like, hey, can I do like a course on like how to absolutely destroy your vocal cords by doing raptor noises. I love this water effect. It's so like hilariously like old old fashioned. The water like actually does like a little bit of wobbling as well. I think it is. Yeah, I don't, I don't really see it. I just see the lighting. The lighting like just taking zone just just wobble the lighting around a bit all the day that's underwater so i got two gears i'm i'm thinking is there three or four whatever the case i'm pretty sure we're done with uh this little corner of the map um <laughs> oh my gosh the t-rex like the dead t-rex does a lot of wacky hitbox things 
Um, I don't know of really any like speedrunning exploits in this game. Um, all I know is, uh, I... <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> I hear the music. Scary sounds of herbivore. What am I looking out for? There's nothing. There's no one here. Maybe that music was meant to play earlier. Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> the terrifying music, man. It gets you every time, so. Uh, but yeah, on the subject of milking the game, uh, yeah, I guess the franchise inevitably came into popularity and then eventually disappeared out of the public eye after about Tomb Raider. Um, probably after Tomb Raider Underworld. And then, uh, they rebooted it with the 2013 one, which I remember them teasing a fair bit before it actually, like, came to be. Uh, that came out with two sequels, and... Who knows what they're doing with the Tomb Raider, uh, license. There's a couple of spin-offs, you got your Tomb Raider Go, you got your Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris. Guardian of Light. Uh, I played Guardian of Light, this game's actually pretty alright. It captures the spirit of the game pretty well for being a bit of a spin-off. Um, I'm gonna save because I know I picked up both gears before I saved last, I think. Uh, but yeah, if there's one thing... Oh, okay. Cool dead end. Cool. Uh, if there's one thing I, yeah, I do really like about this game, it's... Just, yeah, it's atmosphere, it's just a bit of, like, exploration, it's figuring things out, it's getting absolutely lost in level design. Like, Intentionally, that's that's the whole magical point of the game. I'm pretty sure it's not just the two. This has got to be something. But like, what's the point in coming over here, getting attacked by three doggos, only for absolutely nothing to be in the way? Sometimes the, the level design does do that to me, and I'm really not too sure. I'm glad... You heard that, by the way. I used my speaker audio for, for Twitch. And, and I got an email. And I should really mute that before I do my streams. Oh well. Yeah, this is the water. I'm pretty certain there's no, like, hidden, hidden little ledge around here. Nah, like, they push you back from, from there. Because uh, I don't remember the other... At least, I, I do remember there's at least three gears. I don't remember... Hmm. Well, I guess I can work my way back up. And then we can reassess from there. So, at least you can. Yeah, you can. It's Mario 64 error textures. This is worse than Mario 64 error textures. Actually, no, it's way better because at least it's on a CD and they knew that they could fit at least generally higher resolution textures. But you can definitely see, like, okay, they don't link up with anything. They're very, like, stuck to the grid. Uh, they warp in miraculous ways as well. Uh, and ultimately, there's some wonderful texture filtering on top of everything. But that's, that's the look. Ah, oh, really? That's the glide look. Okay, if your game doesn't have the glide look, it ain't looking good at all. I should really save when I get to the top so I don't have to climb all the way back up. Uh, one thing I guess is that the Lara model is really high detail, I, I guess I'd say, for like, it's time period. And I, I know what people say is like, oh, you know, they turned Lara into a sex symbol. And it's like, oh, maybe, but, you know, them hips, they don't lie. Embrace 3D, return to anime 2D. Uh, I love actually this, yeah, this game brings up an interesting combo of like, the ent the entry into 3D um, because this was like there was Crash Bandicoot and then there was pretty much this and Mario 64 like all coming out in 1996 and all being these like really like fancy 3D games of some kind uh, this is going to be a really weird jump there you go 
They're all 3D games, uh, and definitely like very 3D. Like they play on the, you know, on that perspective really well. And also, all of them are pretty, you know, groundbreaking in some capacity, and different. And no one really knew how exactly to do 3D, but I'd say games like this hold up maybe more than. Um, which one was the Mega Man X game that was in a 3D perspective, except it was as fast as Mega Man usually is, which is not very, so it looks just painfully weird. Um, I'm pretty sure I needed three gears. So there's a lever there. There's, yeah, there's three posts. So I can put one of the, one of the gears in place. I can put another one in place, but ultimately I need to come up here with a third gear. And, yeah. I... Hmm... Pretty sure me falling isn't going to do anything, but, uh, there's a little pathway down here. I know this is the way to go, but I'm also trying to remember if there's actually, like, a secret along here, uh, when you don't have the water flowing over in this direction. I'm curious. Well, that's not really a, a drop, is it? That one's also not really a drop. What does this lead to? Wow, this keeps going. <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. What a waste. Alright. How about let's load a save. It'll be quicker to work my way back up to the top than... Or to... To discover my way down the bottom, I guess. Start playing Sonic Adventure or continue Sonic 2 Emerald Hell. I assume you mean Emerald Hill. Emerald Hell is like, yeah, it's one over. Why do you think he collects six rings or six uh, emeralds in the first game? <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's one on the nose. I already read Sonic EXE on stream. I don't have to do it again. <laughs> uh, but, like, yeah, I, I feel like... What are, what other games came out in 96? Like, what's what was, like, a really good 2D game that came out in 96? I feel like it was this year that was just like, yeah, no, like, you can't do a 2D game in today's market. Like, everything had to be 3D because these games... We're able to push these polygons, they're able to push these kinds of visuals, and they're able to provide these, like, really brand new experiences to home audiences. Um, definitely not, uh, not, you know, the first 3D games out there. We had, um, you know, we had Doom, which was kind of 3D, but even then we had, oh, and Quake! Quake was this year as well, as, as well. Um, we had Doom, uh, which was, yeah, kind of 3D, uh, but I'd also say just, like, Daytona. Uh, Virtual Racer, Virtual Fighter, um, I'm not gonna say iRobot, that one's cheating a bit. <laughs> Gosh, where's, where's that darn gear? Just looking in every single nook and cranny over here. I swear there were only two. There's this little, was it this little? What did I trigger? Are there more enemies? Who knows? Yeah, there was this whole area over here, and I didn't really particularly pick up anything. So maybe I did just walk past it when I was over here. I can't even hear myself think. Like, that's how... that's how annihilated this music goes. in here. That looks like a dead end. Wow. <laughs> hmm.
went in here, and I got the thing down to the right. And I'm pretty sure there was nothing else in here. So, okay. I'm losing my head in over there. And then I did the jump over on the right and crossed the bridge. And I know that once you're at the end of the bridge, you've got your other cog. And this T-Rex is still sitting there, so he's chilling. probably back out in the, the bit over here oh well like <laughs> this is this is the other quirk of the game oh boy does it like you know you do get a bit lost like I'm, I'm not lost but it's just like okay there is a gear somewhere in the level and uh particularly around the midpoint of the game some of the levels like start game very very large um actually I, I feel like we might might not experience it all this stream but definitely the next stream, like, that's where the whole, like, midpoint of the game comes in. I'm feeling around there. I'm feeling, like, somewhere off to the sides here is my illustrious search of the gold, and the gold being, uh, gears. Okay. Ooh. Is there something up there? Can I actually go up here, or nah? It almost looks like a ledge, but I don't think it is. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm feeling in this direction, but again, like, there's no ledges or anything for me to really climb into from the looks of it. Which is weird, because it's over here, and you've got to, like, almost tunnel... But then it just stops. We lost Captain. We have food for two days. Food for two days? Where'd your food go? Nah. Must be out somewhere in the jungle. I'm just like absolutely missing it. Lara wanders around for a tiny little gear. You think she could like improv something off some rocks eventually? She doesn't need to find a very specific gear. She just needs to go eh, and just slam some things together. Call her a day. Wedge open a door. Like, do you even need gears to do it? So this is the, the one. This is just here. Maybe it's in here. So like one part of the way walks like past this. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking. Oh, hi there. We're gonna need to think fast, man. Never gonna leave this tomb and Quagsire gonna eat up it. Dude, Quagsire is gonna rule rule the world eventually. Listen, he evolved to have arms. That's gotta mean something, right? Although, I guess there's dinosaurs here, so who knows what evolution is doing these days. Oh. What's my reward for coming up to the very top? Hey, hey, there's the gear. There's the gear. I'll just safely drop down from some ledges. All hail Lord Quagsire. All hail Lord Quagsire. Our Lord and Savior. Dude, the best part is that like I could have just like wandered into this like tiny little tiny little bit of water anyways. That's what I mean, is that this, these levels they snake around. You don't quite know where you're going. But 
They're good fun. I've actually really wanted to toy around with like the level editor. They released one, I think, with like Tomb Raider 4 or 5. Um, maybe there's actually level editors for the old ones as well. Um, I don't know if I played the, the expansion on this one. It feels a bit cheap. I'm not the biggest fan of Tomb Raider 1 unfinished business. It's, it's really odd. Um, although I guess they didn't charge money for it, did they? It's just a free download. But... It's only uh, Tomb Raider 3 that they charge money for. Uh, the expansion one. And then they just made Tomb Raider 4, like, actually long. <laughs> so, that's okay. Alright, time to gear up. Ah, oh, you see what I did there. Well, you can't see it, because I said it. But you can hear it, and you can feel the funnies. Maybe. Alright, to commit to the bit, we are saving. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of any other 2D games that came out around this time. The the obvious one later down the line is um, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. That one, uh, that one is like the like definitive like 2D experience that sells well and stands the test of time so much better than, like, like these full 3D games. It leverages some of the capabilities, and it obviously does some 3D things to do, like, visual cues, but it's generally, like, a sprite-based 2D game, which is, like, whoa, what's going on there? And then, meanwhile, like, they also make, uh, not one, but two Castlevanias on the Nintendo 64, both of which are very hard to get into these days. They're really hard games to... To understand. Um, and isn't that a bit of a weird one? Is that like, yeah, as growing up, as a kid growing up in this day and age, I did get sucked into the whole 2D vs 3D thing. I really liked my uh, my PlayStation, and I gradually dropped off wanting to play games on handheld. Although the handheld stuff was good fun, but it was like, oh, you know, apart from like Pokemon. It was kind of tough for, uh, like, you know, me to be sold on a handheld game, because Sonic 06 sequel? Oh my gosh. Alright, look at this. Three gears. I did it. Oh, they're machine cogs. Sorry, they're cogs, not gears. So, stitch them all together. The last one's not even hooked up to anything. Pull the switch. The last one's not even... None of them are even moving. Alright. But, uh, you'll see that the water is not flowing beyond there anymore it's actually it's empty i believe there is actually a secret if you do want to go back to the um to the waterfall don't you uh so i'm gonna casually wander my way back there just to show off a secret because i do know of that one uh yeah you don't particularly have to get all the secrets in this game the second one you do they they do punish you for not punish you they they present you a bonus uh, in the second game if you do manage to get all the secrets. But in this one, I'm pretty sure it's just, you play it straight. So yeah, so this is where all the water was taking me earlier, and now it's just like, it's like empty nothing. Uh, that does mean I probably shouldn't be dropping the same way I did before, because again, no water at the bottom. Ah, oh, there is water. Okay. Ooh. But you can see that now it's not pushing me back. And there's a wonderful little hole here. There's no side levels in this game. It's just as it is. That was the end of the level. <laughs> well, whoops. Oh, well. I forgot that was the end of the level. Whoops. Done. Okay. Continuing on. Continuing on. Uh, we got these lovely interior carpets. Lovely interior carpets. What could be better than interior carpet? Ah! <laughs> they give you a bit of time, but you do have to like really react to it. And then I love this. It just it just blocks the entrance. Kind of poorly, but it does block it. No more leaving for you, Lara. You gotta find another way out. 
So, up to the top of here. You can... Well, there it is. There's the ski on. It's, it's just chilling there. So... Uh, yeah, these levels have names, but they only tell you when you save the game. So I can't really tell you what the level is called. This isn't a push wall. That's a door style. Yeah. Oh, there's a lever hiding on the wall over here. <laughs> Death is really is better than this room. Oh my god, I, I jumped a bit. I wasn't paying attention. I was paying attention to the chat. And I was like, ah, practice. Listen, if I was asleep, I probably wouldn't trust these statues. Good thing there's raptors on the ready, you know. Uh, we've got three wonderful doors to choose from. I'm choosing this one. The right door is the right door. Unless it's not the right door, in which case... Ah, oh, darn it. Uh... Leave... Okay, I guess it's just, just... This is just a door that's gonna open eventually. But yeah. So, yeah, I... Uh, during, like, the GBA days, I was still kind of like, I mean, there's, there's games to play, but... I don't know, I was much more wowed by the 3D games at the time, uh, so I stuck more to consoles, uh, which were fortunately going very, very 3D. You can see the bait right there. It's a wonderful bait. You gotta fall for it as well. Did you like that kind of exploit? I don't know what's going on with that, but it's like if you're walking, you just drop down immediately. I think what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to spin around and then like drop from the ledge. But I don't know. I like my strat better. Nothing screams class like a like a box. Ooh. <laughs> Done. Love the skeleton on the floor. Wonderful decor. Where can I get one? I really want to get a skeleton for my house. People will walk in, just like, skeleton in the corner. Come in, come in, have a seat, have a seat. Would you like something to drink? That's the easiest way to get people to not have any drinks. Let me put on a... What is not a Romanian accent and be like, ah oh, yes, we have water. That's not Romania at all. <laughs> You're looking a little pale. What other, like, wonderful things can I get? Kill someone and get a skeleton? Who said anything about killing? You can just get the skeleton first. Uh, so I'm out of that direction. Okay, cool. We're going for the chicken hand. The chicken hand room. <laughs> Whoosh. I, I have no idea, like, how they even... I remember this room. I don't know how they even, like, want you to do it. Because I pull the lever, and it moves something, like, out of my way. But I love these like deadly spikes over in the corner. This is a fun fact by the way, and they do intend for you to do this later in the game. If you're walking, you can actually walk through the spikes, but don't let go of that walk button because you will get skewered. Every single one of these spikes has blood on it. Someone has fallen on every single spike in this strip. And they and no and then no one washed it. They just sat there, they were like, ah this is... I mean you know, there's more, there's more with blood than without blood. We might as well wait. Uh, I don't believe this is the jump they want me to do. That's not at all the jump. Diagonal. I can't do it. I put a little lip here so you can jump up on back to the beginning. Alright. Well, fortunately you can... Yeah. Yeah, it's really weird, because I believe the starting position of it 
That's, that's not really any better, is it? But... Hmm. This is a rather curious angle. I don't think anyone's going to be happy if this works. Whoa. Hold on. Wait. Nope. Hold on. <laughs> nah. Nah. I, I can't choose it that hard, can I? Nah. Okay. So, move the button. Move the thing. Got it. Yeah. I guess the other one has to be moved, so maybe I'll go back. We go for the Spartan door. Uh, is, there, is, this, is this something I push? Oh, it is something I push. Cool. Big push. And then here comes the fun part. It's like, oh you can you can tell that there's like one over here. You're like, oh no. And then you can see the the breakable floor here. Just bolt it. That's one more door. Wonderful death trap. Yeah, I'm trying to think what other spooky things I could get in my house. Maybe a fire pit, that one's always good. Fire pit is always a s weird one though, because it's like, I mean, how do you... How do you safely install a fire pit? At least a skeleton, it's like, it's a skeleton. What's it gonna do? Rattle? In the wind? We gotta have this music again, why not? Uh, maybe I should have gone right. Like, there's a ledge right here. Continue going in very weird angles every time. That's, that's the Tomb Raider right way. Just nest, nest these rooms. One thing I absolutely admire about this game is just this, this grid based level design works. Like, it's weird. It's like, it shouldn't really work as like smoothly as it does. It seems so obvious. It's like, oh, okay. Like, you know, none of the, none of the level geometry like breaks this like tradition. I think they like Tomb Raider 3 let them divide it into like a triangle so like there's a triangle going diagonally across one of the platforms that's the best they can do and they kept that all the way up to Tomb Raider 5 uh wait a minute this is the beginning but I've got a door open now I've got a door so do I use the starting position or do I use the uh I guess I probably shouldn't use the starting position, I should use the other position. Alright, well, it's quicker to go the other way. Oh yeah, if any of you guys have any... Oh, it's Halloween soon, isn't it? Not like, not quite soon, There's... I've still got one more stream left of September. Uh, but... We're approaching that spooky time. Spooky time of year. Where I get to use Gallo's humor even more than I usually do. I know. The people who know me the most are just going to be like, Oh no. Oh no, bro. I feel like that one's also going to move somehow, but uh... Yeah, no, that one's also going to move somehow. I guess I've got a platform here. Um, I've done this in a bit of a weird order, but I'm going to take a shot jumping over there anyways. I think I've got the angle. I think I could do it. Like, I think I'm probably just going to jump up onto the ledge. Ugh. I swear I could do that jump. Mm. 
once more and then I'm just gonna move the platform again I know I know oh. we're moving the platform again look at me I didn't pay attention at all it's amazing <laughs> Busy time of year, like once you hit quarter four in the in the year, you suddenly got you know you got your your Halloween, which isn't the whole year. I know, I know. I like I like having the Halloween lights on for the whole year, the whole month though. Um, but uh, and then after that, U.S. folks have Thanksgiving near the end of November, and then suddenly it's like Christmas. It's just like the moment Thanksgiving's done, Christmas. There we go, move that one across. You go back in the... Oh. Okay, I forgot there was a bit of a drop there. Like, I don't know how you guys do it. Too many holidays. Have one every month, bro. Just, just, you know, have a, have a... What's one for January? See, we we over here in the in the down under region have a uh, Australia Day, mate, on a uh, January twenty sixth, uh, a contentious holiday for for some, but uh, definitely it's it's uh, it's in January. <laughs> that day is not disputed. Um, and uh, I don't really think we've got really that much. We've got our Labor Day coming up. That's a oh no! I accidentally didn't. I I accidentally jumped in the wrong time. Ah, oh, I was back here. All right, this is this is why you save early and you save often in this game. Actually, don't save that early, but <laughs> save often. Russian student have only one holiday a week, and it's New Year. You've only got New Year? Jeez. I. Like, I don't know how I can sustain, um, and maybe this is like a very first world problem, but I don't know like how I can sustain like full workload effort without at least like some time of leave throughout the year. Um, nothing more than what, like what our country just ordinarily does. We get, um, I think it's standard, you get like 20 days of uh, paid leave and then 10 days of uh, sick leave a year, and then plus public holidays, which equates to probably about like 27 days of leave and then that's I jumped a little far but that's okay um you lose a lot of that when it comes to Easter and Christmas though because you're guaranteed you know Christmas Eve Christmas Day and then Good Friday Good Monday pretty alright Monday actually the Monday is better than the Friday isn't it well actually no the Friday had the supper so it itself was good. But, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't looked into it, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I guess Halloween isn't a public holiday. It's not, it's not really. It's a privatized holiday. It's a myth provided by Sears. There we go. That's how you do it. Easy. <laughs> There we go, that's the third door open, so now I can wander back. Oh my gosh! Pro, this guy needs a Mentos. There we go. Give it a jump. Oh good. I love like some of these sprites. Like this it's such a die by cards. It's such a like crude graphics style game, like when you think about it. Like, I mean it's early 3D polygonal. Oh no 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 Uh It's 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 not like too early in the sense of like oh there's lighting and textures which is like rather impressive. Actually the lighting in this game is really really nice for its time. It's a real like modern game in that sense. It's just like it does mip mapping, I guess it's that. If you if you enable it, you can you can turn it off and just like play the game pure as well. Um Alright, you know I'm gonna get killed. You know I'm gonna get killed. It's gonna happen. Look at that. Too good. Too good. 
I wonder if like they even scanned like real objects in this case or they're just gonna call it a day. Well, anyways, here we go. Wonderful item. Uh, I'm gonna pick it up from the correct side. Here we go. So grab that. Oh. There you go. Run out of here. Get the heck out of Dodge. I hate this part of the level. We're just like these these can kill you if they do fall on you. Uh your goal is to realize that you can just run past that boulder. And then uh run all the way back out. And get into the water. Where you're now getting shot by someone. And you're like, what? So no no longer are we fighting exclusively. Weird, well, weird lumberjack. So use those med kits. I don't have any other weapons, do I? Nah, I've just got the pistol, so doing old fashioned. So the trick is to jump around a bunch. Eventually he dies. Well, you have my total attention now. I'm not quite sure if I've got yours though. Hello? I'll heal and hide you to a barn door yet. Of course. You and that driveling piece of the ski on. You want to keep it so bad? I'll harness it right up your... Wait. We're talking about the artifact here? Damn straight we are. Right up. Hold on. I I'm sorry. This piece, you say? Where's the rest? Miss Natler put Pierre Dupont on that trail. And where is that? Ha! <laughs> you ain't fast enough for him. So you think all this talking is just holding me up? I don't know where his little <laughs> red spine the base, yeah. Frog legs are running him to. You'll have to ask Miss Natalie. Thank you. I will. <laughs> it's just a hilarious way to end this cutscene. Uh, and anyway, that's it. That's that's it for the first quarter of the game, the first chapter of the game, which took place in Peru. We will now figure out where Lara's adventure goes. But I, I like this idea of, like, it's a globetrotting experience as well. Like, you're not just going through those same caves all the time. They do a, a rather different tone. Uh, four times in the game. We've got four different locations. I love this cutscene as well, because it's just like, man, you know, Lara's just a regular human being here. And she's gutsy enough to cut a lift, jump off, and know the momentum to land properly at the top of this top of this skyscraper. Bro, you could have taken a helicopter. Parachute jump, you know. Relocated now to St. Francis. Could have saved yourself you cutting a lift as well. Rumor amongst my fellow brothers is that entombed beneath our monastery is the body of Tiope, one of the three legendary rulers of the lost continent Atlantis. And that with him lies his piece of the Atlantean skion. The pendant divided and shared between the three rulers, which curbs tremendous powers. Powers beyond the creator himself. My toes sweat at such possibilities, lying so close to my mortal self. Each night, I beat myself rid of these fantasies, but it is bro, indeed stop. a test. Stop beating yourself, bro. Pierre, you litterbug. Well... Here we go, the wonderful temple of Greece. Uh, I don't know why the camera is like awfully zoomed in when I do a cutscene, but the moment I save it fixes itself, so that's okay. <laughs> Welcome to Greece. We got Ionian columns, we got tigers. Where are they leopards? Really take the take the beating, don't they? I'm coming at you. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I like this globetrotting experience because it means that, yeah, the game doesn't entirely look the same. Uh, it's definitely uh, still, you know, murky indoor environment. There's only so much that you can really do with a old indoor environment, but, you know, it's neat. Uh, I'm trying to 
trying to remember what's with these buttons. Ah, it opens up a room over on the far end, I guess. Alright. Here we go again. Yeah, exactly. You hear that? Monkey! Oh, that was easy. Oh, there's two of them! I ain't returning the monkey today. Rip monkey. There's a lot of things out there to kill Lara, and monkey is definitely one of them. We got bats, we got monkey, we got levers, we got spikes that are uniformly decorated and in, in red. There's another monkey. Did you did you see that there was a third one? Oh my gosh. That monkey is having fun. He's having a great time. Who puts monkeys here? We're in Greece. Are, are monkeys really, really popular in Greece? Like... The weirdest part as well is that, like, they've been living in here. Like, this is obviously where people used to live, but... I love uh, how they put animals in tombs that did not live in this part of Yeah, exactly. It's like, okay, no human has lived here for so long. Obvi- Oh, at least hopefully, they didn't have these animals in there the whole time. Oh, jeez, that was just like, yep, cool. I love this meme as well. So, you got this guy here. He's giving you a bit of a hard time. He actually really gives you a hard time. Jeez, bro. Anyways, you'll see him, like, start to run off, and then it's like, he's legit gone. They, they programmed a thing such that when he disappears from view, even if it's behind something that he has to walk around eventually, he's just gone. He's out. Peru also did, uh, did not have wolves, I think. Oh, gutsy jump. I know I can move the block by one, but why do that? That's not the fun option. Uh, I remember there being a really nice secret in, in that little hidey hole. You can tell it's Greece because there's Omega symbol on the ground. They got the columns, they got the cool ceiling. I say no, it's Greece. Uh, I'm actually amazed it took them a while to get to Egypt. You think Egypt would be like the most obvious one to do, but no, they dedicated a whole game to it. So this is a really weird secret where it's like you have to slide down here oh. cuz you can't get the height by jumping over there so let me let me take another stab at it once more with feeling okay once more with feeling oh. close close not quite Ooh. Hmm. Oh, now I'm just facing the wrong way. <sighs> There's no like added secret. It's just it's it's oh. It's just this, just me doing it the wrong way, apparently. Uh, come on. No. Oh, come on, Lara. Tis tisk. That's me jumping the wrong way. It's because she's not quite like... I'm, I'm landing like too early on the ledge over there. And then proceed to be turning the wrong way. Hmm... Yeah, phone vibration. Why? Why is this going a bit weird? Because yeah, if you're on the other one, you you jump too high, so and you can't quite pumped out Crimea bad. Now we're freezing. Our home. You're freezing. You need some warmth, bro. Get some aircon. Get some of that like those gas heaters. 
I'm not having a good time with, with this jump, apparently. Oh, Why? Why am I actually having so much trouble? Because I know, I know, like, what you're supposed to do here, but... The timing is, like, rather off, I guess. So I'm thinking I've got to be a bit more centered. Such that I jump further across, but then, like, yeah, Lara's not high enough on the second ledge. Re. Re. Come on. You're jumping into wall or facing the wrong direction. Uh, like, yeah, I, what I understood you do is that you slide off the first one and then you're on the second one and you do the jump and then you grab onto the ledge. But it seems that Lara is not liking jumping onto the ledge and I think it's because she's too far to the left of, like, the ledge. Um, but no matter what I do, she, she seems to keep landing, like, pretty, pretty close there. So I'm thinking maybe, oh, uh, maybe she's not, like, like if I'm more, uh, further away from this door, so closer towards the wall, she'll jump a bit lower, but too low, and she doesn't grab onto anything. And then you just, yeah. You don't want her to face away from the ledge. That doesn't work at all. But you don't want her to, like, exactly jump there. Jump, sorry. <sighs> okay, okay. It, it must be a little more across. I don't know if jumping later on this really does anything. I think it actually doesn't. Like, the arc is kind of the same. Uh, maybe not quite that same, but... Oh, that's two times in a row, man. I don't like this at all. Oh, come on. You're gonna see me do it and like be like, yep, what did you do differently? I don't know. Maybe am I actually facing the wrong way on that one? Like oh. Change the strat, bro. Change the strat. That's all you need to do. Alright, there's a second jump. There's a second jump, but I don't think it's as bad. Oh, actually, it might, it might be bad. <laughs> yeah, that was just the Roblox oof sound. There's a lot of, like, Lara oof. There we go. What was that for? Shotgun ammo. You know, the weapon that I've definitely been using this whole time. And also, I love how they, like, give you this little, like, out ledge. Like, that, that ledge will kill you, basically, because you're going to drop too far down. I don't know why it's there. It's hilarious. It's just there. Why not? Alright. Listen, that was embarrassing for me, but... I'm gonna choose to leave... Leave the, the sins of the past behind. In our trap. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I, I start to get a bit worried about some of these jumps sometimes. Ugh. It gets very precarious. Like, you start wondering, like, am I even supposed to be making these jumps? And I think the answer is almost all the time, yeah. Yeah, they're just like, hey, that's, that's the jump. That's the jump, man. Why are you questioning it? What's really bizarre as well is that you think that, like, oh, you're just, you're walking around the stage, bro. You're going in, like, this strange direction. But then you see a door up there, and you're like, oh, maybe, you, like, this is a secret? I think this is actually the way to go in the level. And that's that's one of this game's charms. The fact that everything in the game is like really intentional. 
Dang it. <laughs> I think I gotta put the button, put the box on the other button. Ooh. Oh, break my legs while I'm at it. So I believe you put the button on the Omega. And that opens the door. She is very strong. That that block is like, how big is that? If Lara is like this tall, you could probably say that block is about two meters wide, two meters tall, two meters thick. What is it made out of? Clay? Even then. That's eight cubic meters of clay. It's massive. In our nunnery, there are many mini churches of different slabs, including the Greek one. Ah. I don't think there's an exit up here. So I've got to figure out how to climb on these pillars from where I'm at. I think it's doable. I remember doing something like really cheap. Or you can just go the easy way, I guess. Yeah, you can probably just go the easy way. Cool. Actually, is this high enough? I don't know if this is... This doesn't look quite high enough. Well, worth a try. Nah, not quite. I assume this is also not high enough for that, because that's that that is the same height. So there must be a way to I think you might be able to cheese going from here up to there. Nah, not quite. Yeah, I don't imagine this is, uh, the way to do this jump. Nah, nah, you're a bit far out. Uh... Unless the door stays open, because I was going to say the other doors stayed open. That's a, that's a big meme on my part, isn't it? Yeah, the door's still open, bro. Oh, they baited me. So for, f for the fact that you rob our temples, I curse you for playing 3D games Sonic for your whole life. Oh, why is Sonic cursing me? Listen, she doesn't technically. She only takes med kits. That's her one true treasure. Everything else is just for show. She's really here for the med kits. And the one piece of the skin at the other end. But there's also someone else stealing it, so... You gotta rag on the guy who started it. He's a trendsetter. There's a lot of terrible trends in the world. I was gonna say, the um... <laughs> one that was like... Screamed out to me was that, uh... You remember that, um... What was it? The milk crate challenge? I don't know, man. I don't know how on earth, like... It's like, I knew that would end poorly for someone, and there you go. The treasure at the end, bruh. The, the treasure was the friends we made along the way. That is because they're copying a movie. Uh, oh, I see where this is going. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I guess this is basically just Indiana Jones, isn't it? It's a little different, because she's not an archaeologist. She is, like, an actual treasure hunter, but she does it for the, the sport. Which I, I find is kind of fun. There's a crocodile. There's a croc. There's a little little crocodile. Can I swim back? Yeah, hi croc. How you doing? Oh, you gave me you gave me a little little tickle. Little little nibble on the feet. And all your friends are dead monkeys. All my friends are dead monkeys, bro. Uh, oh, I'm gonna ignore this croc. We just swim past him. He's living his life as it is. He doesn't need to worry about this. <sighs> alright, alright. Croc, you're coming in with me. You're coming with me, bro. And then he's like, I don't know. Get now here. Alright, you're coming with me, Croc. Get him! Ugh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
I love this idea of like draining water as well. Like even if, even if it's all off screen, like it literally either will do a camera jump cut or it actually happens all off screen. It's hilarious. Um, so this is an actual like a kind of interesting puzzle. There's four keys in the level. And uh, they're all in these like named doors of different Greek gods. So we got Neptune over here. Oh, I think I've got to activate something at the bottom or something like that. It's a rather tall room. It does go down a fair bit. Go down, bro. Uh, here we go. So as in there's a lever, and that opens the Thor room. That wasn't quite what I was expecting. Maybe there's another lever close by for the, the Neptune room, or... Nah. There we go, let's just drop down a little more. There's another lever. Is there another lever on this side? Nope. Doesn't look like it. Crocodiles live in Greece. And where do they live? Damocles. I'm hearing a, a bat. There's definitely a bat nearby. It's coming. Africa. <laughs> Greece can be in Africa. Alright, legit. Alright, so I remember a couple of these rooms. I remember the Thor room was just like, complete shot in the dark. You see, this thing will just like zap you. Maybe it's because I'm standing on the... No, actually. I don't know, man. It just happens. I love this giant hammer as well. I love that if you're standing here, by the way. Bonk. Bonk. <laughs> Get freaking crushed by Thor's mighty hammer. Alright. Jump past it. Ah, dang it. Alright. You can't get me. <laughs> Giant horny bonk. Exactly. Uh, I don't suppose. Yeah, baiting this isn't really working. Oh, there you go. Now what? <laughs> oh, there we go. There's a little little box. That's cool. Oh, I love this mighty hammer. Just right there. But hey, look at that! The game teaches you very, very mildly about Greek history, or Greek mythology. There's a guy called Thor, he's got electricity, he's got a giant hammer. Amazing! What could be more Greek than a hammer? back by one just to line up a bit nicer with the hammer because yeah you gotta be a bit higher up there you go actually do you jump on i don't think you do jump on the hammer i think you're actually jumping up to like there yeah <laughs> more pushing She pushes, she pushes, and she keeps pushing. To what avail? To move this block forward. I love the um the ambient sounds in uh in these levels. So suddenly this um uh a lot of this Greek place, uh the, the Greek dungeon has um like these wind noises all over. Like almost like waves? I, f I feel like I'm hearing waves. Um but it's probably just wind. That's like the furthest of a jump you can get. Like they'll they'll never go that further that much further than that. And then you hear one key. So the goal is of this level is that there's four keys for the four different gods that they're showing. I like this Lara Roblox oofs. The Lara Roblox oofs are so good. 
She is like a Roblox model when you think about it in this game. Like, okay, real talk. When people go like, oh, you know, like, <laughs> you, know, you know, like the pointy booba, the kiki, if you will. Um, but like, legit, even the second game, Tomb Raider 2, fixes it so much. Do I have health? I've got health. I don't know how you're supposed to even like live that, but... A little, a little better than a Roblox model, but, but, I mean, yeah. And I, yeah, the Tomb Raider 2 model is so much better, and they go for a little bit of fanciness. They give her a little ponytail, they stick it out, give it a bit of a uh, physics. It's actually kind of neat, just them doing that in 97. Alright, we got Damocles. This is the... There's all these S-words above me. You gotta watch out, bro. Uh, 1920 versus 2020. I'm just gonna tab out, by the way, just to refresh the chat because that always goes so bonkers on my streams. Uh, refresh, I know. Alright, all good. <laughs> now, this one is a lot easier than the hammer. Because you just run in and you get the key. Nothing wrong with that. Oh. You want me to save, do you? Said the chat that was definitely going at the time. <laughs> and then you stand here and you're like... Ah! Ah! So you can see the, the sword is like spinning above me. And then if I stand kind of near it... Ah. <laughs> ah. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Ah. <laughs> it's just a hilarious trap because it's just like what what is this? Swords? I guess. What was the tale of Damocles? Uh there's another lever. Which one does this one do? Okay, so there's Neptune, so now I gotta climb to the top. When Tomb Raider became Luigi's Mansion. Oh, did Luigi's Mansion also do the, the swords from the top of the room? Nice. Uh, hey, look, another email. Oh, hi there. <laughs> hi there, how are you doing? Alright, can you, can you see him? He's, he's down there. He's down there. There you go, easy pickings. Easy pickings. Jump. Can't get me now. Oh, I think he's in that point where he's gonna run now. So hold on. Eh, oh, he's off screen. He's gone. He's gone. You can't see him. Mario! <laughs> uh, I think the safest way to get to the bottom is to jump over here. And then let the bats. There's more bats. There's so many bats at this level. One more, one more switch. So now I gotta go back up to the two rooms. Atlas. Oh, would you kindly go on that door? Not funny at all. I know. Actually, uh, on the topic of games I played this uh, this week, I recently finished Bioshock Infinite's uh, Barrel at Sea DLC. I had. I uh, bought it maybe last year, but I played the game, the main game, ages ago. Uh, playing it again, I reminded myself how much I actually kind of liked it. Still got its quirks. I don't particularly like it like more than the other two, but it's a bit better than I than I remembered it was. So it didn't actually peeve me off as hard. I, I felt very kind of like a uh, like I didn't really like the the ending. But I'm like, you know what, like. Treating it more like its own contained thing is like, eh, it actually ties into itself pretty okay. Uh, the Burial at Sea DLC, I was sorely disappointed with, uh, the first one was like, oh, it's like the original Bioshock, so it's stingy on ammo. And I'm like, that doesn't make it fun, making it stingy on ammo. It makes it kind of annoying. Like, I, and I played on the, the 1999 mode, so 
it gave me half as much ammo as it was designed to give you as well. So I ended up meleeing everyone in the entire game because there's no way that I was going to live normally. And that means that, hey, look, I didn't play with your mechanics because you didn't give me any, like, ability to use it. That's not fun. That's not 1999 mode. I don't know what 1999 they're referring to. Oh, so they're referring to System Shock 2. Which is not that stingy on ammo. I don't know where they're getting that from, but sure. Uh, but you know, the first episode was okay. Gro monkey! Monkey! Ah. Uh, I love this, this gimmick as well, because I'm like, oh, okay. So you stand here, the gate opens, you know what's gonna happen now. You know exactly what's gonna happen now. I botched this one up, didn't I? <laughs> that was a bit a bit dead, but I, I like the uh the, the gimmick of um like Atlas holding the, the weight of the world. So uh have a boulder. Have a boulder, why not? <laughs> that was the monkey mastermind right there. There we go. There's a lot, of, a lot of little nooks and crannies in this level, I'll tell you that. Uh, but then, yeah, I played the second uh, DLC, which actually turns things on its head and actually turns the game into a stealth game. It introduces uh, little, you know, detection bars, uh, you're noisier on certain ground types, uh, you got ability, or one new ability that at least helps you disguise yourself, um, and also, like, you can't kill enemies, really, like some enemies. I'm like, oh, okay, that's kind of neat. Problem, uh, one one of the, the plasmids you got, and when you upgrade it, it gives you the ability to turn invisible and not consume any, uh, any Eve, which is your magic, not consume any of that while you're standing still invisible. This also, like, you can attack someone while invisible. It breaks you out of invisibility, but there's enough time to do your attack animation and then cast it again and turn invisible. So I ended up actually cheesing so many situ uh, so many scenarios by using the ability, basically kind of like baiting someone to walk towards me and then I just hit him in the face. And even if every single other person is standing next to me, they will not, well, they'll see it, but they won't keep shooting because I'm, I've gone invisible. They can't see me. What, what are they shooting at? Uh, and it seemed like a bit of an odd way for them to design that whole bit, but yeah, sure. It goes on for a little longer than it really should as well because it's all stealth and stealth means that it can take forever. Um, but... Uh, ultimately, the thing that kind of irked me was the ending of it, because I'm like, uh, my main character's just made some dumb decisions against my own will, purely to make something happen. Ah! It's called Neptune, because you gotta, you gotta swim, bro. Uh, the, by the way, these types of vertical levers, you can only trigger them underwater, and the horizontal ones you can only trigger above water, and that's gonna actually be an important part later in the game, when it's like, oh, there's levers that you literally can't pull. And there's one more key. But yeah, nah, the, the ending actually really did irk me. Uh, stream continues for two and a half hours. Unfortunately not, I'm probably going to end the stream after this level. Um, usually I go for two hours. Um, the Pokemon ones, I felt like some of the streams I didn't really do much much work, so I continued onwards. Um, just a bit, but uh, I'm probably going to end it just after this level, because the next level is a longer one in my eyes. Um, so that probably will go on for a fair bit. Um, I know, it's a monkey bra. Uh, but I also feel like the justification there is that there's 15 levels in the game, and this is level 5, so that puts me pretty cleanly at 3 streams if I can get all 15 levels in 3 streams evenly, so... I feel like that'd be a good way to call the, the streams, uh, to do 5 levels at a time. Um... I think this level is almost done as well, which is a bit sad, I know. I felt I felt like I just started this stream. But you know, time time flies when you're having fun. And that's definitely a big one. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, 
All right. <laughs> you got to work your way down. Don't don't uh don't just jump all the way to the bottom. Like that. Don't 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 go all the way down that way. I kind of like uh some of these levels just being like a couple of ideas put together as well. So you had that kind of like opening uh kind of acropolis style room and then you work your way around the corner only to enter this like tower. Um, and I like a couple of these levels that do try these multiple ideas. Uh, I think the second game probably goes pretty overboard uh, with how that works, but that's fun. Um, don't get me started about Tomb Raider 4. Maybe I'll get to it. It would be fun to just like play like, you know, one of these games every year or so. Uh, maybe sooner, we'll see. So I've got Murray Galaxy 2 on the on the tables as well, and I'm like, oh, when do I play that? I would like to see the tiger. I am not seeing the tiger. Okay. He's just chilling. He's just chilling in Cedar Rapids. Oh, there's two of them. That's why. That's why they give me a pain. There we go. So, I believe I've got the shotgun, yeah. So I can use the shotgun. Uh, everything that's not the pistols does have ammo. Uh, oh, I've... No, I've got magnum clips. I've got ammo for the magnum. But I can't use it just yet. Uh, wonderful glide rendering right there. That's some Zed fighting. After this 3D collection switch, almost have all 3D Mario games. It does almost have all of them. I'm actually... I'm, I'm even amazed that they did the 3D all-size collection with Sunshine. Because that just seems like something that they've never really done, is taking, like, games that are not, like, that old, and then actually just emulating them. That is a, a GameCube emulator. They've done the work. Um, although I guess, like, you know, they technically did... Actually, no, because the Wii U did have a Wii in it, and it never had a non-Wii Wii U. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, they had a non-GameCube Wii, like the Wii Mini. Um, but even then, like... Uh, that means Switch can run GameCube dance. Well, yeah, like, it it probably can uh, emulate GameCube games pretty alright. Uh, but, of course, you can write an emulator very specific for one game. Because uh, I remember, like, there was old Xbox emulators that were dedicated for running Halo. And just Halo. Uh, that's that level, so... Um, yeah, there were Xbox emulators for just Halo. And then we're only getting to the point where it's like, oh, let's generalize it for other uh, game systems. Um, or for other games on the platform. So I'd imagine the Switch is probably in the same boat, where it's like, they definitely did what they needed to do to make Mario Sunshine work, and especially Mario Sunshine work at an arbitrary resolution, um, because I feel like 1080p is like, oh, like, that's definitely something that the game wasn't intended for. Uh, but then... Yeah. We haven't seen anything from that, and I really want them to just, like, go, hey, screw it, Metroid Prime. If they're, if they're doing it with Skyward Sword, if they've done, like, a button-only control scheme for Skyward Sword, they can totally do a button-only control scheme for Metroid Prime. Uh, particularly 3. You don't, you don't need but You can do buttons only on the other two as well. Anyways, with that, I'm going to call that a stream. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching this. I've actually had a really good time playing this game for just, like, two hours, and there's still a fair bit of game left, so I, I'd imagine there's, like, two or three streams more left of content. To, to go through but with that uh i hope you guys have a great time uh staying well keeping keeping fit keeping fun and healthy i know it's a shame that the stream ends um but you know i'll be here next week doing almost the same thing as i do this week uh and then eventually i will after i've done with this game i'll probably dive back into the pokemon gold uh line up again uh, so, yeah, um, yeah, for those of you who are new, just, uh, I re-upload these to my YouTube. Uh, what about Gen 2 postcode? Yeah, so that, that'll be after the Tomb Raider streams, and Tomb Raider is not going to take too long. I just didn't want to, like, dedicate my YouTube channel to so much Pokemon in one fell swoop, so having a little bit of a game to just break it up a little bit, I feel like that's just nice. Um, yeah, so anyone new, just, you can give me a follow, I stream at this time every week, uh, and I re-upload all these to YouTube. So if you miss anything, you can just watch it there as well. Um, other than that, that's about it. Uh, have fun. Peace. Eat your greens. I don't know. Stay well, everyone.